Good morning. My name is Garrick Law, and I'd like to welcome you to the Channel Islands. In the following film, we hope to show you something of the beauty of our islands, and give you a few hints on what to do and where to go. After the film, there'll be a full report of what's on today, plus a weather bulletin. So stay with us for the next hour, and may I take this opportunity of hoping that you enjoy your stay in the Channel Islands, and come back and see us again soon. How did you arrive in the Channel Islands? If it was by air, then you were just one of the many hundreds of thousands of visitors to the islands who chose this quick and easy method of jumping the Channel. The Channel Islands are just a short bus ride from the south coast of England, and direct flights from London now only mean as little as one hour in the air. Air travel has virtually connected Jersey with the mainland of England. For businessmen, this is an ideal situation, for they can live in the very rural and continental Channel Islands far away from the hustle and bustle of city life, yet only be an hour's flight away from the world's business centre should they need to make the trip. So the journey begins as your giant turboprop aircraft powers its way down the runway, so through the mind of every tourist flashes the thought of crystal clear water and lazy days in the sun as soon as he or she alights at their island destination. Once in the air there is perhaps only time enough to read the papers before a flashing light will tell you to fasten your safety belt as the aircraft is approaching your destination. Now is the time that you probably realise that you've forgotten your passport. Not that a passport is needed for entry into the islands for English residents, but the islands are so near to France that it would be a pity to miss such a trip having got so far. However, passengers needn't worry, for one-day passes can now be obtained and English visitors to the Channel Islands can travel on such passes which are obtainable at airports and main harbours. First sight of a place you've never visited before is always exciting. Down below, in fact more than 10,000 feet below, is the island of Jersey. The brakes are on as your aeroplane prepares to land on foreign soil. I say foreign soil because many true Jerseymen harbour a secret pride in the fact that when William conquered England in 1066, Jersey was then part of the Duchy of Normandy, and many Jerseymen were in the ranks of William the Conqueror's army. Jerseymen will therefore say that England is one of the island's possessions, for it was they who conquered Harold's army at Hastings. As your aircraft taxis into its position in front of the main Jersey airport building, it seems hard to realise that less than 30 years ago, all there was in this part of the island was a grass landing strip for the occasional aircraft. Now, however, during the summer season, this airport is the second busiest in the whole of Great Britain as far as aircraft movements are concerned, and that is second only to London's Heathrow Airport. All you have to do now is collect your baggage, book in at your hotel, and within three quarters of an hour you can either be sunbathing on the sandy beaches or window shopping at the many continental boutiques in the main town of St. Helia. The town of St. Helia is situated in the southeast corner of the island, some 12 miles from the airport where you will have landed. The main street is King Street, and it is here that visitors are able to purchase all sorts of goods at prices well below normal English levels. Jersey is exempt from purchase tax, and therefore, coupled with its fine summer weather, the island has become a holiday paradise. You'll have no doubt already noticed that nearly all shopkeepers in the island speak both English and French. This is because the island caters for a good many foreign visitors, 
and also many agricultural workers in the island are Bretons. Apart from tourism, Jersey's basic industry is agriculture. The island's variety of potatoes, Jersey Royals, are as well known to British housewives as they are throughout the world. This is certainly no mean feat for an island of only 60 square miles. Every summer the quay at St Helier is chock-a-block with hundreds of lorries, piled high with barrels of Jersey Royals, awaiting their turn to load them aboard small coastal freighters that ply the English Channel with a cargo of Jersey potatoes heading for many vegetable markets up and down England. Because of this flourishing summer industry, many thousands of men are required for jobs connected with the island's agricultural industry. Extra labor is required on the docks as well as on the country farms. In fact, without this extra summer help, this small island would be unable to keep the English market supplied with as large a quantity of high-grade potatoes as they need. It's on the farms that a good deal of seasonal labour is really needed. Each year, the annual migration of Frenchmen from across the water in Brittany to Jersey takes place as they all come to help with the potato harvest. Nowadays, the modern farming machinery is doing a lot of work that the labourer used to do, but still, a Jersey potato season without its Breton helpers seems a very long way off. Not all of Jersey is hustle and bustle of agriculture and holiday makers on the beach. There are still many unspoiled country scenes that prove ideal subjects for the camera. It must be admitted though that a lot of good photographic material can be found on the beach. Especially candid camera shots. Sun, sea and sand are three very good reasons why so many visitors come to the Channel Islands. During the past 15 years, Jersey has more often than not topped the sunshine charts with more hours of sunshine than any other resort in the British Isles. In nearly all the bays around the coast, bathing is safe and the inexperienced swimmer can learn to swim in relative safety. However, if a little old for swimming, then just the sun and the sand can keep you satisfied. But beware of sunburn. Last year, the island's hospitals had to deal with numerous cases of sunburn when visitors to the island and a few residents had sat for just a little too long in the sun, so be warned. On Jersey's west coast, giant Atlantic rollers break on the long stretch of sandy beach called St. Juan's Bay. It is here that the thrilling sport of surfboard riding can be watched. With surfboards ten feet long, adventurous young men can be seen riding huge comas caused by swells far out in the ocean. This is not a sport for a poor swimmer. It takes months and months of practice before one can achieve the balance to ride a surfboard well. St. Juan's Bay is the scene each year of the Great Britain Surfboard Championships. With rollers like this on their doorstep, it's not surprising that the present British champion is a Jerseyman. Holiday Parade, back in a moment. <laughs> 